In uh, chapter 13 of Matthew's gospel, and chapter 13 has a lot of uh, these little short parables in it, and the kingdom parables. And so we have the kingdom of heaven like a treasure, the kingdom of heaven like a fine pearl, and this idea that there is this beautiful and worthwhile pursuit of our life, and that is the kingdom of God. And the question is, have you found it? And then when we find it, are we well, willing to separate ourselves from those things that are necessary to be separated from in order to attain it? And so, you know, again, do, you know, I asked this question to a young man that came to visit with me not too long ago. I asked him, do you think God wants you to be happy? And I think we all should ask that question. Do you think that God wants you to have a sense of having found the great treasure and having the greatest gift? And, and I don't think that it's a universal yes. In fact, we can look at Jeremiah, if, if you paid attention to the first reading today, Jeremiah, this is the prophet Jeremiah, woe to me, mother that you gave me birth, a man of strife and contention in the land. I neither borrow nor lend, yet all curse me. So Jeremiah is bemoaning his existence, really. And he's not the only prophet that be bemoans their existence. So Jeremiah, woe to me. And here, some people say that uh, in Shakespeare's pet play, Hamlet, he, their advice is given, neither a, neither a borrower nor a lender be, because to be a borrower or to be a lender always causes a certain amount of misery in your life, especially if you borrow and lend within your family. And Jeremiah saying, I don't borrow and I don't lend and still I'm miserable. And he's blaming God for his misery. And he says, you know, but when I found your word, this is Jeremiah, when I found your word, I devoured them and they became my joy and the happiness of my heart because I bore your name. So Jeremiah has discovered God, and God has become the great happiness of his life. And I would not sit celebrating in the circle of merrymakers, because I was filled with indignation. Now, Jeremiah is filled with indignation because the people that he was, the culture that he was living in was on their way down the tubes. And Jeremiah was proclaiming God's name in their midst. And guess what their response to him was? Well, he got thrown in the pit and he got beat and he got put in the stocks and he was rejected. He was a man of sorrows. And so he's giving, he's singing the blues now. That's what he's doing. Woe to me. And so I come back to the question I asked a few minutes ago, does God want us, does God, not us, not some generic question, you. Does God want you to discover the great treasure that transforms your understanding of the world and yourself? Does God want Jeremiah to discover that great treasure? So we continue. Jeremiah is still complaining to God, you have become for me a treacher treacherous brook. What is a treacherous brook? It's a stream of water that dries up and doesn't provide water and nourishment. So he's comparing God to, to a water faucet that no longer gives water and now he goes through life thirsty. It's like, where is your consolation? Where is your, where is your help for me? And then God answers him. If you repent, I will restore you. 
so that you may bring forth the precious without the vile. Apparently, Jeremiah, when he was proclaiming the kingdom, wasn't just proclaiming it as something beautiful and good, but there was something vile in Jeremiah's proclamation. And so Jesus, God is correcting Jeremiah in this little place. So I'm going to say the kingdom of God is like a great treasure. And when you find it, you must sell all that you have and buy that treasure. And in that treasure are the fruits of the Spirit, which brings me back to the original question. Do you think that God wants you to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life? I hope you can give a resounding yes to that. Love and joy and peace and patience. And I know we don't like patience and we don't like the another translation of patience is long suffering or a patient endurance. Because regardless of even when we find the treasure of God's kingdom, we wake up still here away from home as pilgrims in a valley, a valley that is often dark. So I'm going to ask you the same question. You think God wanted Jeremiah to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit? I think so. Do you think he wants you to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit? To have the treasure within you? I think so. But we know that even with the treasure, we, are, we remain pilgrims on this, uh, on this place, away from our eternal home.